My name's Lauren Billings. I'm the Vice President of Billings Productions, or better known as The Dinosaur Company. We build life-size animatronic dinosaurs, prehistoric predators, giant bugs, but we're more known for our dinosaurs like this guy back here. We offer tours daily. Um, we have a one-hour one that's more focused on the STEAM subjects. And of course, we have our 30-minute tours where we just want to talk about dinosaurs. That is back there, an adult-sized T-Rex. With our STEAM-focused tour, we go through the history of the company, what type of people work here, how a dinosaur is built, and of course, you get to touch things. That's the most important part. There's no point in just talking at you if you can't come play. <laughs> here at the Dinosaur Company, no two days are the same. You may see dinosaurs being shipped out the door. You may see a dinosaur being painted, or even us making teeth. We even offer the opportunity to make your own dinosaur teeth, which is really cool. Hi, my name is Kalina Foy. I work here at the Dinosaur Company, and today I'm going to be showing you how we make our dinosaur teeth and how we keep them so realistic. Here we have a two-part resin. This is going to be what we use to make our dinosaur teeth. And then here we have our mold. This is a silicone mold that we made off of real T-Rex fossils. So it's going to be the real shape of a T-Rex tooth. In order to make our teeth, we will use a half and half mixture. We have our first part of resin here that we'll pour in. And then we'll take our second part as well. And we wanna make it as even as possible so that we really get a good mixture there. Once we have that, we're not gonna mix them yet. We wanna make sure they're completely ready to go. And they are even, so we're gonna pour them together and this is time sensitive. What this will do is it will actually create an exothermic reaction, meaning that it releases energy in the form of heat. So as I mix this, this is actually getting extremely hot. And once it gets hot to the point where I can barely hold on to it anymore, that's gonna be when I pour it into our mold. So right now it is getting pretty warm and I'm just gonna go for a little bit longer. Make sure it's fully mixed together. And then I am going to go ahead and pour it straight into our silicone molds here. So our T-Rex teeth, the largest one we have ever found, was upwards of a foot long. So that's six inches of tooth root and six inches of tooth itself. So once our teeth are poured, we'll wait 15 minutes and after that, we will get something like this. We can pass them around, have people paint them, make them into keychains, necklaces, or we can also use them in our animatronic T-Rexes as well. And this is gonna be an example of our T-Rex tooth painted and ready to go home. Now we're gonna go see what these look like in our actual dinosaurs. So now we're in the warehouse where we are actively building all of our animatronics. We have our finished tooth and we have a T-Rex right here to compare it to. We'll take these teeth and glue them in place and then they'll all be painted as one piece. And that's how you make teeth here at the Dinosaur Company. Our dinosaurs are pneumatic, meaning they run on air. When you do pneumatic, even though it's slower, it's more natural. They're pretty basic on the inside, which a lot of people don't believe me. Um, when my father made these, he wanted them to be simple. So inside is a steel frame. We have cylinders. Since the dinosaur's pneumatic, the air goes in, it pushes the piston out from the cylinder, which creates movement. Very simple. The skin is made up of a two-part resin uh, that forms a rubber when it hardens, so obviously it's durable yet flexible. My name is Tommy Ferrari. I am a field service technician here at Billings Productions. My main job is to go out on location and service the dinosaurs every four to six weeks. They are out in the elements, they move around, so they require a fair bit of maintenance. When I am not out on location, I help out here in the warehouse, whether it be paint department, you know, electronics, skin department, any of it. A typical repair would be somewhere that the dinosaur moves around a lot, the neck, the arms. The paint will start to peel off, wear down, or the rubber skin will start to tear a little bit and we want to um, assess that before it kind of snowballing into a larger problem. The kids always 
ask if it's real or not. They, they're not sure, which leads us to believe that we're doing a good job. Coming up. My dad fell in love with how the animatronics resonated with children. He saw how inspired they got. When the Tex Factor continues. What makes our dinosaurs realistic is the amount of effort and time we take. We do a bunch of research, and you better believe I see those trending articles about so-and-so discovered this about this dinosaur, and we're the first ones reading it. We research, we do a lot of uh, educational guessing, like even though we don't have preserved skin, we can kind of guess maybe it was like this. And we're one of the only companies that does this. So just to have like that exclusivity is pretty cool. I'm Cassie Sowards, I'm the lead sculptor here. We are mainly the sculpting department, but we also do hair and feathers. So whenever we have a new build, um, like our newest Bracky, we uh, sculpt that and then send it off to be molded. And then in between shows, whenever something needs fixed, um, and it has hair or feathers, it'll come to us and then we'll fix up the hair, make it look nice again, and freshen up the feathers so we can send it back out. It's definitely really cool. Like growing up, like I always loved dinosaurs. To find myself like here in Texas making dinosaurs and it's just, it's kind of wild. I don't know the mojo of why we love dinosaurs. They were real and, and we can play with that imagination and there's no one who can tell us, oh, you're wrong about this because we weren't there. We know enough that they existed, but we don't know the fine details. So really, we have nothing holding us back besides our imagination of what these animals were. Now that we've had this business for 17 years, I'm actually hearing from kids who saw it like a decade ago and they're like, oh my God, when I saw that, that was the coolest thing. Now I go to college for this and I wanna study this and do that. And it doesn't have to be flashy and entertaining. We just have to have fun and learn something. You see the eyes open, just whoa, like this is a real thing. And you start thinking and you realize the things you love and just, I can pursue those things just like Larry Billings did. <laughs> My mom and dad worked at another dinosaur company. Um, that was when we lived in California. That was for about two years. The boss of that company said, I don't wanna do this anymore. But my dad fell in love with how the animatronics resonated with children. Um, he saw how inspired they got because it's, it's one thing to see your favorite dinosaur in a textbook or on TV. It's another thing to see it blown to proportion in front of you. We moved back to McKinney, where I pretty much grew up, and so my parents started their own company. And then 2007, my father passed away. But rather than getting sad and feeling really down about it, it inspired us to keep going. Because if we kept this company alive, my dad, in theory, is alive too. When my parents started the business, they wanted a dinosaur museum. They wanted a place where the public could come. And 17 years later, we have the American dream. We have the building, our name up in lights. It's, it's exactly what he would have wanted. And the fact that we're doing birthday parties every weekend, that was his goal. He wanted this place filled with families and children and just celebrating and hanging out with dinosaurs. I know my dad would be proud of what I'm doing. I mean, I'm, I'm the youngest of my siblings. I'm also the only daughter, so I'm a daddy's girl. I feel confident that I know exactly where I'm supposed to be in the universe right now. My dad believed in giving something to the community, and he did it by building a bunch of dinosaurs and bringing them all over the world. And now that I'm kind of filling into his shoes, you know, he's already done that, but the question is, what can I do more of? Like, how do I use my dinosaurs to connect people? I want to do anything I can to make things better. I can't fix it, but I'm going to try. <laughs>